how do you think that's going to affect uh, participation? That's something you you mentioned a few times uh, today. Proof of stake, for example, yeah, I mean, it kind it, of limits it, some aspects of participation. What do you think of that? Well, it does. I mean, so if, if there's not a price discovery on any of the other tokens to get the option to, to shift, right? I, I've said many times. I think the the highest probability of growth. Uh, comes to Ethereum Classic because the least amount of config change for the miners, right? So, like, essentially, they're flipping a few switches and then everything's the same. Like, nobody has to change their power profile, any of that. It just switches over. Um, so, I think that kind of could front run ETH Classic. And we did see price discovery up to $175 this year, um, even though it was just a quick spike at 25 terahash. So, to give everybody an understanding, uh, ETH went down to 86 terahash in March 2020. With 150 tera or 86 dollars, you know, price point with 150 tera hash on the network, so five times more hash rate on ETH's network at that time, right? Um, so if that transition happens, it looks and feels a lot like Ethereum, right? We can calculate profitability, we can calculate things around Ethereum Classic a lot easier because it's a one to one, right? So. Um, what's price need to be to uphold, you know, 900 tera hash, right? Uh, at least a couple thousand dollar ETH classic price. What's it, what if it drops back down to where it's 150 tera hash? Well, right now, current pricing, uh, handles about 70 tera hash. So we can start to figure out kind of the math on it. Um, one to one, uh, Ravencoin would have to be, which would be like the next, uh, second, uh, largest. Uh, really would need to get in that. Now, since it's halved, it would really need to get into that like almost dollar range to be able to hold. So 10x uh, or more than 10x, uh, about a 20x of where it's at right now because it needs to go 10x to get uh, back up because they're about five and a half to six cents, right? It needs to get to 10 cents and then another 100x on top of that um, to get, or 10x to get up to a dollar. Um, so it needs to have some serious price discovery to be able to handle, um, you know, hundreds of terahash that would move over, which would then turn into half that for Ravencoin, right? So, um, yeah, so I think it's a, it's a mix of all of them uh, need to have uh, some pretty strong price discovery to be able to handle the current network. Um, but I think what we'll have is exactly what we've seen with Ravencoin. I think uh, if, if, if and when Ethereum moves over, you're going to see a massive receding um, of hash rate. People will power down and try to look at the footprint and saying, okay, what happens now? And then yeah. see if any of these coins get a pricing discovery. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, like something unbelievable and magical. It's just literally people are going to power off and figure out, okay, what's next? Um, uh, and maybe a few spikes to these other networks, right? I've done some models of like the day that switches, everybody moves over to Ethereum Classic. And Ethereum Classic magically goes to 300 terahash. And then everybody's like, wait, this yield sucks. You know, and then they'll <laughs> shut down. So we'll, I think we'll see some of that and, and maybe that all that hash rate moving over to give it a lot, a lot of signal to noise. You know, there's obvi the, the one thing I don't think anybody's calculating is the fact that when this happens, and I'm not saying if it happens, I think Ethereum will figure it out and they'll take the risk because they're, they're just nuts and they're, they're going to want to separate this network. And when there's going to be, you think Solana shutting down all the time is going to be hilarious. Wait until they lose <laughs> acetation between two networks which is what's going to happen, which they already have in the test net, right? You're literally, ETH1 continues to go on. It's holding all the smart contracts and everything. This is only moving consensus over to, to Beacon, right? So you're going to have both networks running and, cons and inheriting the consensus from the other network. Right there, it shows you an interleave, and you're always going to have issues with trying to find acetation. They're already seeing that on the dev network. So I have absolute confidence there'll be issues if they push forward, and then we'll see that drama play out um if that ends up going and then everybody switches over there's going to be huge signal to noise on who's next right so ethereum classic ravencoin flux Irgo, all of them are going to get press right because everybody's going to be trying to shake out who inherits all this potential hash rate um so that noise is probably going to push price i would assume a little bit um, just cause the, just the statistical value of getting that much exposure, mm -hmm. uh, from like CNBC and everybody, everybody, there's going to be punch list. I mean, I've already had, uh, folks reach out from some of these places, Coindesk and, uh, CNBC asking, 
who's now like what we've seen a model somebody linked this to a video to you you seem to be aware of this like what networks you know we, where do we start and it was really just kind of their research wing trying to get an understanding of it right so that already gives me enough telemetry to show that they're going to have articles about it and we're going to see a lot of like what, what's going to get it so i think that mm -hmm. signal helps push some of these coins up a little but really it comes back down to usability i mean ethereum's proved it um like if you have enough demand of people leveraging the network for things it happens to be nfts everybody thought it was going to be DeFi. um nfts driving a lot of the ethereum demand right now i mean just look at the where the transactions are going right so uh, nft uh, can ethereum classic inherit some of that do people care you know i think it comes back down to bitcoin's the number one and will always be the number one most sought after scarcity thing ethereum even with its troubles and its amount of uh uh you know uh, amount of people that are on it and trying to use it nft standpoint it's still kind of the de facto gold standard of the nft even with all the fees solana had an opportunity but it keeps failing and shutting down the network for multiple <laughs> days. And I think that's going to hurt it a lot. Polka dots just in the background. I mean, nobody talks about polka dot um, avalanche is moving a little further, but part of the that problem with avalanche is it's super, super centralized, um, very highly centralized. And a lot of their network stuff is federated. So like, I, I just don't see it. And I literally try to get a, a talk with card uh, with Cardano's uh, top guy, uh, Charles Hotskis and I'm Solomon at CES. We sat and talked for, I don't know, about 20 minutes in the middle of CES, just BSing back and forth about Cardano. And, you know, he was talking about the, the kind of links with like Ergo and like the, uh, the proof of the val the proof of work with like proof of useful work stuff that he was talking about. But like, I just don't see it unless, you know, I think flux is a little further along on like parallel asset stuff. Like there is a, a, a coming of potential use of those GPUs if it's parallel asset mining or if it's uh, a, uh, a tie to like computational fluid dynamic stuff with like render network, uh, doing like um, 3D modeling and computational fluid, the, the you know CFL stuff or CFD stuff. Um, there's something that I think is in play for that, but like, you know, it's a future out from that. So, I mean, I, I think bottom line, there's gonna be a place to go, but I think it's gonna have a, a pretty massive dip the moment that happens. And then all of a sudden we'll be setting back and watching all the issues that Ethereum is going to run into for trying to force this thing. Um, you know, yeah, um, how that works. imagine uh, Bitcoin going to proof of stake. <laughs> yeah, it, it won't happen. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, I, I, I saw a meme the other day that I think sums it up the best. It's like having the exercise bike and doing the work or having a whole bunch of stuff sitting on the extra night exercise bike, right? It's proof of stake. I own the thing. But yeah. it's not doing anything, right? Like you have to put in the work, right? So it's, you know, you're not going to get into shape. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not proving anything if you own that asset, right? It, it's it's a very uh, disengaged way of holding a network, right? Like just because I bought something doesn't mean anything, right? It's the use of it. It's the it's the thing. So I think that's the fundamental issue with proof of stake is that it's incentive structure gets to where you get to a conglomerate kind of setup, right? You get into the Rothschilds, you get into the larger um, companies that will take mat. If it gets price discovery, they'll just buy it all up. Where in the proof of work side, we're already seeing what's happened. I mean, there's big companies that are riot and Wystone and like some of these other foundry, big vestment companies getting into it. But there's only so much power in some area, right? So you have a natural distribution and not everybody has deals or can build in particular areas. So you could have the best crew in the world to build you a farm. And I, I would say Foundry and, and, and Riot are doing some of the biggest builds in the world right now, 400 megawatt, it's taking them three years, right? So the proof of even build to get to the proof of work is not fast and it, there's effort to it and there's a lot of investment to it. So one entity will only grow so big in that concept where you'll have multiple entities all over concurrently doing it because they're all going to get in it because it's all the chase. If the price goes, let's Bitcoin goes parabolic again and we push to $200,000, the Bitcoin network is still going to do this because they <laughs> yeah. can't build fast enough, right? So 
we're seeing it right now. It's still highly profitable. So yeah, then, then the work is the better, the best way right now, by far. Then,